Hi all, let's look at game 10 of the 20 game sets given to me. Uh, in in this uh, first set of games, by the way, this is the last of the set of games where the engines choose their own opening moves. In the next set, we're going to see under TSEC conditions with the opening book uh, given a much greater hardware for both sides and other parameters. So anyway, in this last set of 10, let's see, Stockfish 8 playing white, E4, we have the Royal Lopez, the Berlin, Defense variation very solid indeed. The classic snooze fest Berlin end game. The queen's coming off to the uh, to the boredom of the spectators usually in World Chess Championships usually. But we were blessed in our last World Chess Championship 2018 with many Sicilian defense games. Thankfully, check king e8, knight e4, bishop e6, b3, b6, h3, rook d8. It seems fairly standard stuff so far rooks come off h4 is this pawn a potential liability later that's one question uh, to think about knight h2 for the moment it's it keeps this knight well entrenched on f5 without any g4 so that's the big idea there c5 c4 a5 knight c3 knight d4 knight g4 Stockfish doesn't mind the pawns being doubled. That would weaken Black's d5 anyway if that was taken. Rook h5, king f1. Okay, so here, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem possible to take and then take on e5. Bishop d7 was chosen instead. Uh, there are things like, for example, knight b5 as an example, which would put pressure on that diagonal. So bishop d7, f3. We have now knight e6, knight d5. So stockfish eight with white has a very comfortable position actually. That d5 square in particular looks pretty nice and annoying for alpha zero. Bishop g5, knight f2, bishop drops back, knight d3, rook f5, knight e3. So the knights are prettily uh, centralized. Uh, excuse my lack of in-depth analysis of this position. It just, just from an aesthetic point of view, it looks quite pretty. This position, rook h5, king f2, bishop c8, knight goes back. Yeah, it's some. Uh, I think this is called cat and mouse. Tom and Jerry. Uh, okay, and some high-level maneuvering here. And the knights again, they, they look really quite pretty. <laughs> That's my main comment here. The knights look pretty pretty on d5 and e4. Very impressive. The bishop on d8 seems very restricted. Paul White's pawn chain um, is under attack, but that safely like can be ignored, it seems. And yeah, this h4 is, uh, at the moment, it's reinforced quite well with the bishop and knight. b4. So black gets to undouble the pawns. Is Stockfish playing with fire? Nope, Stockfish is playing with alpha zero. <laughs> but, but undoubling the pawns is, uh, is is that a scary thing to do? To under, isn't black got the bishop pair? The thing is the knights look extremely impressive here. And in fact, the king goes to g4 now. The king's driven back though. And a bit of a repeat there. A3. So is is this pawn slightly loose? We have these pawns on both sides of the board. Are they any under any circumstances going to be slightly loose? Okay, C4 under attack. Under attack. <laughs> um, now that's ignored. It seems. Uh, I believe there's a tactic here. If this is taken, Knight takes B6 looks like a strong forcing move tactic with Knight D6 check forking. The king and rook. Okay, so we have actually that pawn uh, is not, funny enough, taken. So knight f5, the king, the king officially protects that pawn. And the knights, yeah, they seem to be rearranging themselves again in a nice manner, protecting each other. There. Now b5, b5, knight c5. So Relinquishing that c5 square, taking on c4, check. Now a3 looks vulnerable, but d5 is hit. 
Bishop c5, so using that c5 square, knight g5, that's taken. Now, hold on a sec, there's one less protector of h4 here. Is this becoming a little bit more vulnerable, potentially? Let's see. Now, a3 was taken, yes, the big event of the game, a3 was taken here. Uh, what is black getting for that? Uh, so black, alpha zero, has done this gambit now. Well, basically, a pawn down here. Uh, where's the compensation? And also, in fact, this knight, which would have been holding h4, is now eliminated as well. But it's opposite color bishops. Are all of these opposite color bishop endings drawn? Let's have a look what happens here. It's important the bishop controls b6 here, otherwise rook b6 would be a, uh, well, in, yeah. Okay, so rook d1, that pawn's protected. So king c5, check, check, bishop e6. This is a, looks like a grind game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so let's see. Is this just going to be a draw? Is anything going to happen here? But you'll know h4 is actually the same color as this bishop. That's something to know. Is this pawn actually vulnerable? And what would be the upside of taking out that pawn? Could white, for example, get an outside pass pawn? That's something to think about positionally here, eliminating this pawn. Would that put a lot of pressure even in the opposite color bishop scenario? So here, yes, rook b3 prepares g4. Asking that, do you want to take that? But then we have this scenario where it, it was rejected that offer with rook d2. So hg here, rook takes g3. There is a possibility of playing for h4. It was rejected uh, by alpha zero, in, interestingly. And um, maybe that might be an unwise uh, decision because uh, if this pawn is eliminated later, then white gets to play h4 and h5, and then we do have a protected past pawn, which could be very dangerous. Uh, so yeah, just to recap this very exciting point of the game, you know, on hg, I mean, do you think, what's what's your view on this position? Do you think uh, black should be able to hold this? Uh, it seems, you know, with h4, h5, black can always take there and then, and then play bishop e6. This seems pretty safe. As far as opposite kind of bishops uh, scenarios uh, go. So anyway, so that was interesting. Not taking on So rook d2. We have king c5, and now the game continues. But this rook f3 does support bishop f2 to hit the pawn. You'll notice. Okay, for the moment, though, the a pawn is also a concern. Until here, hitting the pawn like this. Hold on a sec. Could this turn sour for black? Could it go south for black, this position? Uh, hold on a sec, sorry. <laughs> after, after this move, um, white didn't take on h4. White didn't take on h4 because a5, it seems maybe that's, that's one of the issues there. So it's not under ideal circumstances yet. So the king comes to protect a5. And can white actually make any progress here? The A pawn is jettisoned here, it seems, to gain a bit of time for bishop e1, well, for the rook to be slightly in a worse position. So good pawn sack, maybe, to get the promise of an outside past pawn. The pawn's eliminated. Is this dangerous now? Because surely there's h4, h5 on the cards under preparation. g4 would need to be supported first. But there seems to be a procedure available here for white to protect g4 and then push through now with h4 under the right circumstances. Here, rook takes c5, there's rook takes f2. Perhaps. Uh, so that's not on the card. So rook c1. And okay, black's got a pass pawn over here. But. This looks really dangerous. This bishop could be sacrificed for that. If a pawn comes there, it's very difficult to imagine this bishop doing anything about 
a pawn, you know, going from there to there, it's very difficult. Uh, indeed, any f5, h7, too late. So it's very interesting scenario now. This outside h pawn is pushed through. This looks very, very dangerous now. Indeed. So the bishop is nicely controlling uh, alpha zeros past c pawn. And that's actually eliminated. Yeah, it looks as though black is in big trouble now. Alpha zero is actually in big trouble. And the bishop comes in. Sorry, the game actually ended off the bishop a3. But the bishop, the game ended here. Yes, Stockfish 8 did beat Alpha zero. And this has been featured on the highly biased King's Grusher channel. I know I've been giving Stockfish a hard time, but it did seem, yeah, from the evidence of this game, that, that Stockfish 8, uh, under this configuration, was able to beat Alpha Zero. And would it do better under TSET configurations with greater hardware? We're going to find out in the next 10 games. They're from set start positions as well, though. And so that could go either way because sometimes, as we've seen from Leela, set start positions, sometimes Leela's clueless, sometimes Leela's brilliant from, from interesting start positions. Uh, but from really random positions, we know Leela's often terrible uh, from really randomized, weird, wonderful positions, which she hasn't trained for. So that'll be interesting in the next uh, 10 set of games. I thought this element of um, legend is dented by this game. But actually, on, on the Leela project front, at least we know, you know, this this is something real and had some weaknesses. Uh, so it wasn't perfect. The notion of perfect is a very complacent attitude, I think, to have in chess and elsewhere in life because there's always room for improvement. Uh, I don't think we should ever rest on our laurels generally. Uh, this quest for improvement, I think, is part of human nature and to to know and document our weaknesses is often the very first step uh, to be able to do something about them. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very, very important game, this game, as part of the official set of 20 given to me and uh, and certain other um, journalists, etc. YouTubers. Very, very important game, even though it seems very dry, very long. It's important to establish this idea that Alpha Zero isn't totally without weakness as evidenced here. Okay, if you enjoyed this game video, then uh, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. Play against uh, other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis from this and other games in advance from the improved menu, learn from the master's YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, see the description, like, share, subscribe with notification bell, all appreciated. Also check out the new Teespring store in the description for form pawns, etc. and other chess t-shirts. Okay, thanks very much.